In this video, I'll scientifically test the heart rate accuracy of the Garmin Venue 2. I'll test its overall accuracy during spinning, cycling and weightlifting. In total, I tested the Garmin Venue 2's heart rate accuracy during 26 training sessions. As always, I do not want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. My channel is not so much about listing features, instead on my channel I try to test the accuracy of different measurements. I tested the Garmin Venue 2 during 11 spinning workouts, 9 outdoor cycling sessions and during 6 weightlifting workouts. In this video we'll explore how accurate the heart rate tracking of the Venue 2 is and if this is better or worse during specific workouts. In past videos, I've tested the heart rate accuracy of the Garmin Venue SQ, which is a cheaper smartwatch in the Venue series. Originally, the heart rate accuracy of the Venue Q was not amazing, but due to some software updates, it has markedly improved. The Garmin Venue 2 has an Elevate version 4 heart rate sensor, which supposedly should mean it can track your heart rate more accurately than the Venue SQ can. In this video, we'll find out if this is indeed the case. To test the heart rate accuracy, I will compare the Venue 2 to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which is generally considered to be one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate measurements. Let's start off with the accuracy during spinning. Here I display an overview of the heart rate accuracy during spinning. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Garmin Venue 2. The blue line indicates perfect agreement, so any measurement along this line had roughly the same value for the Polar H10 and the Venue 2. The red line indicates those measurements where the value according to the Venue 2 is half the actual value according to the Polar H10. The reason I added this line is because in the past I've seen that many devices measure half the actual heart rate when they make a mistake. Now the more measurements there are in a certain area, the darker black the color. And as you can see, the Venue 2 performed very well during spinning, as basically all the measurements are along the blue line. However, there are still a few points away from the blue line. So let's take a look at the individual training sessions to see how good the match actually is. Here you see the first spinning session. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Venue 2. As you can see, I took three short breaks in this spinning session where my heart rate would dip. For this first spinning session, the performance of the Venue 2 is really good. It almost perfectly overlaps with the measurements of the ECG chest strap, with basically no real deviations. For this second spinning session, we see basically the same. There's almost perfect overlap between the measurements of the Polar H10 and the Venue 2. And this is basically true for almost all training sessions, as you can also see in this one right here, and also in this one right here. And as a final example, we can also look at a spinning session right here, where again the overlap between the Garmin Venue 2 and the Polar H10 is almost perfect. So far, this is looking really good. So let's now take a look at cycling outside, which I recorded whilst commuting to and from work. If I cycle outside, there are many more bumps and I also tend to sweat a bit more in the sun, which might influence the accuracy of the Venue 2. Let's have a look. Here we see an overview of those measurements. And as you can see, the deviation between the Venue 2 and the chest strap is now slightly larger, though still not bad. Especially below the blue line right here, do we see some deviations. Let's take a look at some of the individual commutes to see why this is. Here we see my first commute, where indeed we see some deviations in the heart rate measurements of the Venue 2 in red and the chest strap in blue. For this second cycling session, this is already a lot better, with much closer overlap of the red and blue line. And this third cycling session shows even better results, with an even better overlap between the two lines. Now most cycling sessions agree pretty well, though sometimes, like in this one here, there are some bigger deviations. However, many show very good agreement, as you can see in this one here, and also in this one here, for instance. 
Next, let's see how the Venue 2 performed during weightlifting. Now, weightlifting is notoriously difficult for wrist-worn devices because during weightlifting, I flex the muscles and tendons near my wrist, and this makes it hard for the watch to accurately detect the sudden changes in my heart rate. Let's take a look. This is an overview of my heart rate accuracy, similar to before, but now for weightlifting. Of course, the average heart rate is much lower during weightlifting than during cardio workouts. You can see that while there are a lot of points along the blue line, there are still some points below the blue line meaning that the Venue 2 detected a too low heart rate in these moments. Let's check out if we can find why this is based on the individual training sessions. Here we see an example weightlifting session. Again, in blue is my heart rate according to the chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Venue 2. Here we see some disagreement between both devices, but overall it's actually not bad compared to many other devices. It is able to pick up on many of the spikes in my heart rate, though not all of them. We see the same for the second training session right here, where it is surprisingly good at picking up on many of my spikes in heart rate, at least compared to some of the other devices I've tested. For this training session it struggled a bit more, where it failed to pick up on the peaks in the second part of my training. However, overall, compared to many other devices I've tested, it does quite well, though it's definitely not perfect missing some of the peaks in my heart rate. So far, I'm very satisfied with the heart rate accuracy of the Garmin Venue 2. Now to give you a bit more context on how the Venue 2 performed, let me show you how some of the other watches did when it comes to heart rate accuracy. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, consider subscribing to my Instagram and my weekly newsletter. Of course, you would also make me really happy if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Now enough self-promotion, let's see what the overview statistics say. First, let's compare the overall accuracy of the Venue 2 to that of the Venue SQ. So I plotted the Venue 2 on the left here and the Venue SQ on the right. Now these are the overall results for all types of exercises combined. As you can see, there's a much larger deviation from the blue line for the Venue SQ compared to the Venue 2, indicating that the Venue 2 performed better than the Venue SQ for these heart rate measurements. Next, let's compare the Venue 2 to the Fibbit Inspire 2 during spinning. On the right are the results for the Fibbit Inspire 2 and on the left the Venue 2. As you can see, both were pretty accurate, though the Inspire 2 definitely shows a few more points below the blue line right here, indicating that the Venue 2 performed slightly better. The newer Fibbit Lux, which I plotted on the right here, appears to do about the same as the Venue 2 during spinning. Both appear to do very well. Next, looking at weightlifting for the Venue 2 and the Fibbit Inspire 2, which is plotted on the right here, it seems that the Venue 2 performs slightly better than the Inspire 2 during weightlifting, with a higher percentage of points along the blue line compared to the Fibbit Inspire 2. And it also seems to be just a little bit better than the Fibbit Lux, which is plotted on the right here during weightlifting. Next, I want to compare the Venue 2's overall accuracy to the overall accuracy of the Huawei Band 6, plotted on the right right here. As you can see, the Venue 2 definitely performed a bit better than the Huawei Watch 6 in the higher heart rate ranges. Though perhaps the Huawei Watch 6 performed slightly better in the lower heart rate ranges. Overall, I would say both performed pretty well, though I would say the Venue 2 performed slightly better. As I mentioned before in other videos, the only watch that definitely outperforms all other watches so far is the Apple Watch Series 6 on the right right here. Almost all measurements for the Apple Watch are along the blue line, which is great. Despite that, I would still count the Venue 2 among my top performing watches. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the heart rate accuracy of the Garmin Venue 2. It performed extremely well when I exercised on my stationary bike. It also did quite well when I was cycling outside, though it did show some issues. During weightlifting, it was definitely not perfect, but it was better than many of the other watches I tested. All in all, it was quite good. So, should you buy the Garmin Venue 2? Well, if you're looking for a smartwatch with good heart rate tracking and many additional features, then it's definitely a good choice. As I discussed in a recent video, the sleep tracking is also okay, with good deep sleep and light sleep tracking. However, the Venue 2 did show some issues during REM sleep tracking. Still, if you're just interested in tracking your heart rate during exercise, I'd recommend using a chest strap like the Polar H10 to get the most reliable results. If you're an iPhone user and you want the most accurate heart rate tracking from a watch, then I'd recommend an Apple Watch. All in all though, I definitely recommend the Venue 2 as an overall fitness and health tracker. Finally, I should mention some of the limitations of the data that I showed here. First of all, I just tested the watch for a limited number of days and just on me, and it'll be interesting to see how it performs on others. Furthermore, it might perform differently during different types of exercises like swimming or running. 
In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more content like this, consider subscribing to my channel and also watch some of my other videos.